didn't really want to have to do this, but I've been left no choice. Um, first of all, let me say I'm totally opposed to all forms of discrimination. But what happened to me uh, was on the 9th of December in the Wilco store in Woolwich, South East London, <coughs> I was standing in line and I noticed how polite the uh, checkout girl was to the black lady that she was serving. She was chatting to her, smiling, and very polite. And um, as the lady left, she said to have a nice day. Anyway, when it was my turn to be served, which was less than five minutes later, I smiled at her and said uh, good morning. And I was subjected to the complete opposite to what the uh, lady that I'd witnessed being served had. She didn't answer me, she looked at me as if I was, who do you think you're talking to? That kind of attitude. And all the way through the, um, while I was waiting there, she never spoke, only to tell me how much it cost and how much the change was. And she was all very matter of a fact. And I know, what she was up to. She knew what she was doing, up, unless she had had some brain disorder or something. Anyway, um, that's a bit mean, but never mind. <laughs> um, well, she knew what she was up to anyway, I believe. There's no way, that there's no excuse for what she did. Anyway, uh, before I left her, I said to her, have you heard of good manners? And then she sort of gave me a look, because I think she was a bit surprised that I was saying anything. I went to leave the store and then I thought, no, she's not getting away with it. So I went up to a member of staff and asked, I said, uh, can I talk to the manager? And she claimed she was the manager. So I tried my best to explain what had happened and she said, oh, well, I'll have a word with her. Anyway, so I thought, well, fair enough, she's going to have a word with her. Went to leave the store, and I just happened to turn round to see what the um, so-called manager was doing. And uh, she was just standing there talking to somebody. I don't know if it was a member of the public or whether it was another worker. And I thought, well, she's not going to be doing much. So I went back and said, well, when are you um, going to be saying something to her? She said, oh, I'm not going to talk to her now. I'm going to wait until she's finished her shift. So I thought, oh, well, you're not going to get anywhere here. So I thought, well, I'll phone the um, head office. So I phoned the um, complaints department. And I spoke to, um, the first time I think it was a, a guy I spoke to, very apologetic, oh, really sorry that that happened to you. Um, the manager, he will phone you later on today. So that day went, no phone call. So the following day I rang up again. Oh dear, we're very sorry. Um, give him uh, a couple of days and if you don't hear from him, he should phone you today, but if he don't, give him until the next day. So I gave him two days, still no phone call. So I phoned up again, the same thing. Oh, he'll phone you today. And that went on and finally, on the 20th of December, I got the phone call. And, uh, this, well, basically, the, the, one of the first things out of his mouth was, oh, I could hardly believe it when I heard that it was this woman because she's such a lovely girl. She's so popular. She's worked here for three years and we've never had any complaints about her. So I thought, oh, well, that says it all. You're not going to get anywhere here. So I wrote a letter um, complaining about the, the situation. And I got a reply from the um, head office saying that uh, they've had a full investigation and my claims are unfounded. Well, so I thought, right, well, then I'll get on to the MP. So I... Um, sent an email to the MP in, I think it was February, the beginning of the year anyway, I sent an email to the uh, local MP, I'll have to look at the paper, 
um, but it's a ponga a seer and um, I got a reply from her and uh, she was going to get in touch with the company. Anyway, um, quite a bit of time went through. I got the, um, well I think I got the uh, coronavirus and was sort of knocked out basically for 10 weeks. Anyway, when I felt well enough to actually do something, I sent um, an email to the MP and uh, to find out what was going on. And the reply was, well, she hasn't heard back from the Wilco store, so she's done nothing. But I thought, well, that's lovely, isn't it? So the Wilco store is doing nothing, she's going to do nothing, so I've got to take it on myself to actually do something because nobody else is going to do anything. Yet the MP claims that she's going to stand up against racism, she's going to do this and she's going to, her voice will be heard when it suits her. Really, that's what, more or less what she's saying. When it suits her, she's good, she won't tolerate this kind of behaviour. But she's done nothing to help me. And I've been forced, really, because Wilco's have shown total disregard for me, the customer, and the MP is just basically saying, oh, well, she's not going to do anything because she's not supporting me, she's not done anything for me. Um, so I've been forced by their lack of doing anything to go out on the street and protest on my own. And I think it's a damn disgrace the way they've behaved the pair of them, with the company and the MP. They should be ashamed of themselves. <coughs> and I'll rant and rave on. Um, but I don't think that people should have to put up with the nonsense. You know, they give a load of crap out saying what they're going to do and what they ain't going to do and how they... But if you don't stand up for your own rights, they ain't going to stand up for you. They make out they will, but they're not there to help you. The MP certainly ain't going to help me. And the Wilco store think, oh, well, he'll just go away. Well, I'm not going to.